now the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and one loss. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 65.8 kilograms. Representing Al Munar and Bali MMA and fighting out of Russia. Presenting the first challenger, Roman Bogata. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of nine wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.6 .6 kilograms. Representing MMA Village and fighting out of Paju City, South Korea. Please welcome challenger number two, Anis Tai Kyun. Cam! For fighter instructions, it's the bandit, Dickie Larkin. Gentlemen, you've been over the rules. This is my instructions all time. Obey my commands all time. If I tell you you stop, you stop. Any questions? Any questions? If you want to touch gloves, let's do this. World for the vacant, brave CF featherweight championship of the world. We have a potential five five minute rounds, Kirik, and this has all the fixings of being an out and out war. Bogatov opened up pressing, but very, very briefly, almost ate a jab. Could have caught a high kick on the other side of his head. Tycoon came such a cultured striker. We have seen that in fights with the likes of Eric De Silva, Arturo Chavez, Nurzan Akashev. Tycoon Kim going to the head so far, expecting to go to the body or legs soon. There it was. Seems to be able to keep opponents at the end of that job. Tycoon using his distance, his, his height, very, very effectively. Leaning that head back ever so slightly, which means if he shifts his weight forward, he's going to be quite a bit closer than he appears to be. And he's working from southpaw now to make it difficult for Bogatov. Trying to pat down that lead hand and come over the top. Uppercut hook combination from Bogatov. Good takedown defense. Perhaps a little bit of a clash of heads there. Bogatov in on a single. Let's see what the defense of Tycoon Kim's like. He's trying to get the submission. Has the neck, but Bogatov looks calm here. Doesn't look like there's any threat of a submission imminent from Tycoon Kim. Bogatov pops the head out. Brave Nation, Aries has about half a dozen different options here. He can try and hit as you're seeing right now. He can try to stand, he can try to sweep, which is putting his opponent on his back. He can try to crawl to his opponent's back, or he can submit. You just saw on a plot of submission attempt. He's got, probably gonna go for a triangle, there it is. Doesn't have the leg. Has to control the head, he's, oh. got, he's got the head, he's got his foot in place, he's got long arms, may go. May go next for an arm. Didn't have the shin flush across the shoulder blades, but he's shown just how dangerous his submission game is. Threw that up out of nowhere. That was like lightning. People often think of submissions as being the province of jiu-jitsu, but they forget judo is phenomenal at submissions as well. You need only look at the Ronda Rousey armbar to see how dangerous Submissions can be from a judo practitioner. Bogatov trying to secure the takedown. Bogatov very slowly seeking to gain centimeter by centimeter, seeking to gain control of his opponent from top. Nice little hammer fist from Tycoon Kim. He's doing a good job of staying calm here. Right now, he's almost got Bogatov trapped in a little bit of a crucifix position. Landing enough shots to make it uncomfortable for Roman Bogatov. These fighters are so evenly matched. Two of the very best in the world. There's no mistake where their strength lies. Bogatov predominantly the wrestler with awkward striking Tycoon Kim the cultured striker with a piston like job 
Aries doing a great job of striking however lightly. Oh, sweep attempt. Wasn't able to finalize it. Let's see if he can get anything from it. Look for a stand up. Nice fight. So Got one even. hook in. So evenly balanced, Carrick. Right in front of us in our broadcast position here. Tycoon Kim's doing a great job of, whilst he may aesthetically look like the man on his back being pressured it's against the cage, he's landing the more damaging shots here, Kerry. There is zero question who's the more effective striker right now, and it's the man on bottom, Aries Tycoon Kim. It's incumbent on Bogatov now to start doing some damage from top. Referee Deggy Logan calling for a little bit of action. He's obviously been listening because now he's opening up with some of the shots of his own. 30 seconds to go in the opening round. Deggy Larkin may be looking like he's about to stand them up. Deggy Larkin wants to see a little bit more action than we saw. And we are just about to get it, Brave Nation. Oh, big knee attempt from Tycoon Kim. Bogatov with a big knee to the, the solar plexus. Bogatov oh, pressing with shots now. <laughs> there you have it. What a way to finish the round on an absolute knife edge. And this is the kind of quality you come to expect from a Brave Combat Federation World Championship bout. Two of the best in the world. There you see a beautiful wrestling game and then the defense from Tycoon Kim trying to turn it into effect. And this is where it was most interesting for me when they were pinned up against the cage. For a lot of the time, it was Tycoon Kim who was landing the more damaging shots. He was being more proactive. Interesting, Phil. Tycoon is foregoing the, the stool that would traditionally be there. He seems very comfortable just sitting down on the ground. His corner is massaging his arms to promote blood flow, get rid of any fatigue there. And you can see little bumps in and around that over that left eye of Roman Bogatov showing that he has absorbed the greater damage thus far in the fight. Referee Deggy Larkin has cleared the cage. We are in to our second round of a potential five for the Brave Combat Federation Featherweight Championship of the World. Bogatov again pressing just as he did at the very beginning of the first round. It is dangerous when you're facing somebody so good at counter striking. Again, everything Tycoon Kim throws is a stinger. Bogatov putting it on him now. Bogatov showing that he's more than happy to, change, that, to exchange hands and exchange strikes with Tycoon Kim. Oh, he wobbled him a little there. Big yep. clubbing shots thrown by Bogatov. Very, very smart strategy for Bogatov to initiate. This isn't a man you want to stand and go back and forth with. Best defense can be a good offense in very many cases, including this one so far in this round. He's doing a good job. I don't think this is how Tycoon Kim expected the fight to go with Roman Bogatov putting the pressure on him. I thought he was thinking it may have been the other way around. Bogatov pressing hard, and then there it was. When Tycoon tries to settle down and strike back, there'll be a takedown attempt. Big, heavy sprawl from Tycoon Kim, but as we know, Roman Bogatov is relentless in these positions. Needs to be wary of the choke here from Tycoon Kim. Bogatov may try and sit through or may reach for a single leg. Bogatov may be looking for what we call a Russian two-on-one in the United States. Yeah, you see that relentlessness with the leg from Bogatov. Off a Russian two-on-one, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Enjoyed that, didn't you, Kirik? That was just beautiful, Brave Nation. And now Bogatov finds himself on top, but needs to be wary of the submission threat of Tycoon Kim. Tycoon Kim, who's continuing to throw off his back and do damage. 
Kemez's feet and hit, had his feet initially to stop the attack and with the thought about messing about with a go-go platter there. That was interesting. I would love to be a mind reader and get inside Tycoon Kim's mind and see what's going on in there. Momentarily looked like he was going to use the wizard to try and pop out, but he has the feet on the hips. And that's usually indicative that he's going to do something proactive, try and cut an angle for himself. Big shot over the top from Bogotov. He's being more proactive than he was in the first round in this position. And those hips of Taiki and Kim are always dangerous. Does have three wins by submission, an arm bar, a rear naked choke, and a triangle. Been threatening with that omeplata, hasn't he? I think he was threatening a go go, -go, -go. plata right there. Imagine that. Well, that. That would be the first ever go go plata in the history of Brave Combat yes, Federation, it would. wouldn't it? The man's brain is going a million miles an hour. He's constantly thinking. Should I sweep? Should I stand up? Should I submit? Should I elbow him? I'll elbow him. Nope, I'm going to sweep. Nope, I'm going to stand up. And it's going back and forth and back and forth. Very, very hard style to deal with. Bogotov just on top at the minute. Good head position. Realizes he needs to be more active in this position. Or referee Dicky Lark is going to stand him up. Can't quite see the position here. No, he doesn't have the neck. Dicky Larkin wants to see some effective striking or furtherance of position or a sustained submission attempt. Needs to be wary of the triangle here. Tycoon Kim trying to isolate that. Has bicep grip. You see a lot more fighters now favoring bicep grip when setting up a triangle. The guard of Tycoon Kim is closed. Little pity pat rabbit punches to the ears. Definitely a better round for Bogatov with regards to his output and his offense, Kirk. Like his corner, little, little fire under him. So go after him, try and slow him down that way, and it is working. Big shots from top. This is turning it into a classic championship bout. Just driving that forearm into the throat of Tycoon Kim to make life uncomfortable. Bogatov doing a lot better picking his shots here. Another big shot from Bogatov. Brave Nation, the fight from here does appear to be dead even at this point. After round two, quick reminder, this is a title fight. This is a five-round fight tonight. And it must be said, we've been talking about the submission threat of Taikyun Kim, but Roman Bogatov does have five wins by submission. Three arm triangles, one Bravo and one Von Flu. So it's not as if he is any kind of slouch on the ground himself. Back down. Oh, 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 oh. Showing sure, great faith in their fighters' conditioning. It's a little bit easier to breathe. Your hips are elevated above your legs. Both of these fighters have already given so much in the two rounds. That was a great second round for Roman Bogatov. The big question, Phil, is can he sustain that potentially for another three rounds? Third round, as you've alluded to, Kirk, this is a championship bout, so we have five five-minute rounds potentially to get through. Good stiff job to open up from Tycoon Kim. Again, from that southpaw position, and a hook. He's opening up well with the strikes. Counter over the top from Roman Bogatov. Tycoon Kim may have sensed his opponent, potentially got the better of him in that second round. Trying to adopt the exact same strategy. A lot more aggressive. Now he's the one putting the pressure on Roman Bogatov, forcing him to move. Oh. Phil, Roman Bogatov looks just a little fatigued to me. 
Well, people forget just how, yes, scoring the takedown is great in mixed martial arts, but people forget fighting for that takedown, even executing the takedown, can be so debilitating to your cardio. And as we've seen, Tycoon Kim can continue this kind of output, almost Nick or Nate Diaz-esque throw 60% and then maybe every fifth or sixth shot puts a little bit more pep into it. Bogatov finds a command over the top and takedown defended by Tycoon Kim. And as you say, Bogatov looked tired and Labour getting up here. He's eating some big shots. This could be it. Bogatov's jaw looks just a little bit loose. He's certainly defending ably but he's not showing the level of attack that we saw in round two. Just stalking his Tycoon Kim. I think he senses that Bogotov might be a little bit depleted. Even his body language is a little bit less aggressive. Jab is perfect. The timing on it, the precision on it. And that was the jab that he completely decimated the face of Nurzan Akashev with back Brave in Kazakhstan. Brave Nation, Tycoon Kim has perfected a technique created to the best of my knowledge by Muhammad Ali, where you mix up pity pat shots, touch, 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 boom, with no indication whatsoever that the shot that the hard shot that landed was anything other than the rest of them. Watch those hands. Some are gonna touch, touch, and some oh, are gonna sting bad. Beautiful counter hook by Tycoon Kim. That left hand south proposition is money for him. Bogatov in on a single. How much does he have left? Great defense from Tycoon Kim. That in and of itself is a win defending that takedown. Thought about the big uppercut. Tycoon Kim growing in confidence now. This has the measure of the distance, doesn't he, Kirik? He's landing his shots. He believes he can stuff the takedown attempts. He believes he's got the better conditioning. May even have a big uppercut loaded if Bogatov drops that head down. Oh, Bogatov pops Tycoon Kim's head right back. Bogatov chasing a little bit. Bogatov still landing his own shots. That outside single, very hard to work in MMA. And right now, he's potentially going to eat some shots. But that stuffed head compromises the breathing as well. Good heavy sprawl from Tycoon Kim. Just needs to get that leg free. Doing a good job of stuffing the head. Trying to roll out of it, but Bogatov ends up on top. Can he inflict a little bit of damage in this third round? Brave Nation, watch very carefully what happens in the next 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Who lands the most shots? Elbows from the bottom from Tycoon Kim. Love to see that fight is being proactive off the bike. Trying to sneak up a leg for a triangle. Has the foot on the hip, may try and switch, create a little bit of an angle. Tycoon even, Tycoon even snuck in a little reverse elbow there. Again, Looking for an Omoplata look, again. Uh, Omoplata, that's his third attempt at an Omoplata. May switch to the go-go Plata. No way. That is incredible jiu-jitsu. Very, very rarely seen technique, and the head comes out. No question in my mind, who won that round? Phil Campbell. Oh, and Tycoon Kim unquestionably won that round, but he opens up a big cut on the forehead of Roman Bogatov. I think it was those elbows from the bottom opened up a big cut. We'll want to see a replay of that if possible. My belief is it was a reverse elbow that snuck in with, with literally perfect timing. Ooh, that was the biggest shot that Roman Bogatov landed in that, the third round. Tycoon Kim proving just how dangerous he is, not just on the feet, but 
threatening with the likes of the Ome Plata into the Go Go Plata. You're just never safe anywhere when you're fighting Taekyun Kim. Another telling thing, Brave Nation, there you saw it. Who gets off the stool first? That's a very clear indication of who's feeling better conditioned. Now we are into the deep waters of the championship rounds, Carrick. Oh, and Bogatov with the hands on the knees. Not good body language right from the get-go of the round from Bogatov. Slow to come off that chair, slow to straighten up. Expect Tycoon Kim to launch a body attack. He's going to put all oh, that jab again. Oh, pinging him with it. A left hand is like a laser. Comes over the top with the shovel hook. Bogatov needs to move the head and it's not that he doesn't know how, it's that fatigue has set in at this stage and everything he's seeing is coming just that little bit too quick for him. He also may be worried, Phil, about those high kicks. You move the head too much, you catch a shin across the side of your head and that is that. Another big rear hand. It's the jab, it's all about the jab, isn't it, Kirk? It's the jab, what we're gonna see soon oh. is what he does off that jab. Shot over the top from Bogatov, he's not done yet. Bogatov again, trying to get in on that single, but may end up getting his back taken here. Potential triangle attempt, nope. You wonder just how tired Bogatov is in this situation. He may be tired. This is a lot better position to be in than he was standing, eating jab after jab after jab after jab. Try to get a hold of the neck here. Bogatov is relentless with the takedowns. Bogatov nearly had the back. Bogatov moving the mount. Nope, denied. Bogatov on his knees, still trying to get the takedown on Taekyun Kim. Taekyun trying to limp leg out that. The relentlessness from Bogatov, clearly fatigued, but chasing down Taekyun Kim. Oh man, Bogatov like something out of The Walking Dead there. Bogatov landing significant shots from top now. Taekyun Kim content, flat on his back, which means not much is gonna happen. Brave Nation until he starts to get on his side, not a whole lot gonna happen. Owen Bogatov now in top side control. Maybe trying to hit a Kimori here, can't quite see, it. how's the figure four grip? grip. Very difficult to do when you're in this position. May use it as a means of advancing his position. Or to sweep, or to stand. And Bogatov has the back. Beautiful scramble. Back to the feet, and again, Roman Bogatov trying to get in on that single. Runs the pipe on it, scores it. Ninja choke attempt, nope. Gonna look perhaps to sweep. There should be a return to full guard shortly. Bogatov is operating on autopilot, but thankfully that autopilot is set to single leg. Just be wary again of the submission threat. Both of these guys are incredible athletes, Kirik. Fantastic championship bout. Roman Bogatov looked out of it, looked fatigued, but he is still very much a game competitor here. Taekyun Kim, calm. Trying various forms of guard. Keeping his opponent close enough so there's not enough leverage to hit with, with significant power. Bogatov doing the right thing, head underneath transition, trying to pass into side control. Kim able to retain. Hand on the wrist. Such a finely balanced fight. Taekyun Kim thought about trying to get back to his feet. Bogatov wise to it.
to, on the half, may even look to just push away and create distance. Much, much better round field for Roman Bogatov. Very difficult fight to score, Carrick Dennis. You could make the argument that it's two rounds apiece. You could make the argument that it's three to one for Tycoon Kim. Phil, for the sake of argument, let's say right now that this is an even fight. If that's the case, obviously this fifth and final round coming up pivotal. is going to be pivotal. pivotal Whoever yes, wins the next five minutes wins the championship of the world. And they are not being given the belt. This is not an easy fight for either man. When Bogatov looked out of it, gets that single leg beautifully every time. Even when he looks like he doesn't have it. Sheer force of will and tenacity. Hugely impressed. As I said, Phil, I do not know how the judges will score that. Certainly by the older interpretation of the unified rules of mixed martial arts. That one went to Bogatov. Under the refined understanding of the rules, it's anybody's guess right now. But very, very impressive round for Roman Bogatov. And now, Phil, no matter how tired he is, he knows this is it. This is it. This is the moment. He's got to give everything he's got for the next five minutes. And if he does, he may emerge victorious as world champion. Fifth round for all the marbles. Apparently, uh, there was an errant kick. We may get a replay of that. Those always hurt a little to watch. Referee Dickie Larkin making sure Tycoon Kim can continue. And a little bit of a reprieve for, for both fighters here. Dickie Larkin just giving Bogatov a warning. Tycoon Kim looks ready to go. Oh, see. here's our replay. And yep. Just a little low, completely unintentional, and Brave Nation, we're back at it. Nice straight shot to the body from Bogatov. Tycoon Kim replies with a sumptuous one too, and again, the single leg. Gets the takedown, what is Roman Bogatov made of? This is incredible. The sheer heart, determination, and will being shown by Ramon Bogatov, the number two ranked featherweight in the world. Phil, let no one ever question the bravery of a Russian fighter. And what was so impressive about that takedown was it was right in the middle of the Brave Arena. Tycoon came trying to get up, but Roman Bogatov sticking to him like white on rice. The outcome of the next 15 seconds, Brave Nation, may decide the outcome of this entire fight. Does Roman Bogatov end up on top? Tycoon Kim gets to his feet, but maybe looking at a snap down. What has Bogatov got left? That tank is nearly empty. Nice stiff shot from Bogatov, but a straight left lands for Tycoon Kim. This, this is literally who wants it more, both these fighters are fatigued. This is all about will, heart, and determination. What a championship bout. Tycoon Kim cannot help but be in fight of the year contenders. Once again, Bogatov trying to get the takedown. What does he have left? Tycoon Kim doing the right thing, stuffing the head. But when Bogatov has a leg, there is always a chance he can score the takedown. Looking to move behind, he's got the leg back up to standing. Little scramble, he, Roman Bogatov may not have the gas right now to finish. Looking for the same oh. single he got earlier. Very ambiguous position here. It really is a 50-50, isn't it, Kirik? When Roman's got his arms around that leg, you cannot count him out. Tycoon Kim defends, may want to stand back up, but 
They go for the back, may stand. If I was him, absolutely, positively, I'd bring it back up to standing. And again, Bo gets a whiff on Eichel. He's being shot down now by Taekyun Kim. Both these fighters have given absolutely everything. Two minutes left in the fifth and final championship round. This is an illustration of heart, will, and determination from both men. Bogatov looking for that leg. Does not want to try and tie up his opponent and try a leg trip. He wants to get in on that single. He's forcing Taikin Kim against the cage. If he could score a takedown now, it could completely change the complexion of this round. Very clear strategy now. But you wonder just how much he has Look. left again on that single leg. They try and kick out the leg of Taekyung Kim. <laughs> Take down by Roman Bogatov. Not completed though. Need to see just a little more control from top. And down, here comes some strike opportunities. That wrist is controlled, triangle may be coming. His hand is still in, giving himself a little bit of space. Not a lot of bit though. That hand is being his saving grace. The fact that the shin isn't flush across the shoulders. Bogatov needs to posture, they posture and land a big strike. Needs to be aware of the Omoplata as well as we've seen. Hammer fist by Bogatov. What a fight this has been, Kirik. Phil, we could not ask for more from these two men. 10 second clapper. Bogatov trying to finish with big hammer fists. Both these fighters have given absolutely everything. And there you have it. 25 minutes of combat in the books. Unbelievable performance from both men. Absolutely phenomenal fight. It was such an honor, Brave Nation, to watch these two give their best. I have to give both these men a standing ovation. That was incredible. Roman Bogatov pops up first, shoots his hand up, followed in close succession by Aries. Brave Nation, it all comes down now to the judges. We're gonna get a little bit of, little look, little highlight look of some of what just happened. We saw that takedown and that takedown may have been all important. It's subjective at this point, Brave Nation. What counts more in the judges' eyes? Is it the striking or is it the takedowns? Is it the top control that was accompanied by no insignificant number of strikes as well? Incredible ebb and flow back and forth. Earlier on, clearly, Aries was in ascendance, had the better conditioning, but now it's Roman Bogatov standing, taking in the deep breaths. Well, Tycoon Aries Kim sat forward. The two are standing now, embracing center cage. Who won this fight is anyone's guess. A very compelling argument can be made for either. Mohamed Kamber and the Hawk, Mohammed Shahid, standing center cage with that belt. The Brave Combat Federation featherweight championship belt. Multiple videographers, photographers, capturing this moment for all time. Fighters slowly donning their sponsor apparel, moving towards center cage. Becky Larkin, standing center. We are now awaiting the arrival of the roaring lion of brave, Carlos Kramer. And there he is to tell us what it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, give it up for these two warriors in an incredible main event. 
After five hard-fought rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 48-47, Bogota. Your second judge scores about 49-46, Kim. And your third judge scores about 48-47. Your winner by split decision, a new Brave Combat Federation featherweight champion of the world, Roman Bogota! Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 21 wins, seven losses, and one draw. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 79 kilograms. Representing Zenith Fit Fabric and fighting out of Lodz Poland. Presenting the first challenger, Marcin Bomba Bandel. Introducing your next warrior, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 22 wins and five losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 79.3 kilograms. Representing Kill Cliff FC and Top Team Salzburg and fighting out of Austria. Please welcome challenger number two, Ismail, the Austrian Wonder Boy. No! For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Dickie Larkin. Gentlemen, you've been over the instructions. Listen to my commands all the time, obey my instructions. Any questions regarding the rules? Any questions? If you want to touch clothes, let's do this. Putting the pressure on Ismail right from the get go. Bamba's not the only one to take down away from this position. He's being taken down. That's a great point, Gary. Comfortable wherever. Off his back. On top. Yeah, looks like he's going to go. Risk of striking. Big shot over the top for Bamba. Oh, the huge shot from Bantal puts Modiev on his backside. One hook in from Bantal. This is not worth the arm bar here, Phil. He's looking for it. He's going to try and reverse his opponent, put him on his back. He's got that bar. He does have five wins by an arm bar in his professional career, trying to break the grip of Modiev. Bellying down, getting stacked. That elbow's still in there, but I think there's a slight bend in it, and the arm's free. Good switch to the only Plata. Again, attacks, attacks the floor. Oh, 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 the top! He got it! The 19th first round finish, or the 20th first round finish in the career of Marcin Bandal. The 19th by way of submission, ladies and gentlemen. The most dangerous submission specialist in the history of Free TF, Marcin Bomba Bandal, is for you. Super welterweight champion. Great mission, mixed martial arts. Was born from Jiu-Jitsu and Jiu-Jitsu won tonight. The level of jiu-jitsu in Poland is extraordinary, as you saw. Down. 
what an extraordinary display. The belt is now tied neatly around his waist. He's standing above us as the fans are treated to a replay. Look for one arm, it was denied, took the other one. Now Mendel is getting a hug from his coach who is actually a bear who shaves in clothing. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. As I'm well ready, I'm should. ready. Lights are bright, now throw the confetti. The Hawk, Muhammad Shahid, up for his congratulations. Give me the green light. Nobody saw it. Nobody thought this fight was going to end after five rounds with a decision, and it did not. Exactly what happened. We're just about to find out. All right, Brave Nation, another dramatic finish inside the Brave CF 63 cage. This main event championship bout comes to an end at one minute and 20 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by armbar and new Brave Combat Federation Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Marcin. Bamba! Bamba! Brave Nation. Introducing your warriors for this main event. Your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner! This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and four losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.1 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team, Ross de la Hiva, and fighting out of Nantes, France, please welcome the challenger, Amin Fierceness. Uh, Yo! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and two losses. He stands 190 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.1 kilograms. Representing full house and fighting out of Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Give it up for the reigning, defending, undisputed Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Clayton Predator Silva. For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. Brave Nation, you are about to witness arguably the toughest challenge in all of sports, five rounds of five minutes of mixed martial arts fighting, but it is not gonna go five rounds. Decky Larkin almost had to get involved and separate these two guys before the fight even became official. Speaking of official, we are underway in the main event at Brave Combat Federation 44. Big kick to open up from Clayton Silva. Predator stalking, fainting and landing. Low kick was checked solidly. Oh, beautiful short hook from uh, Amin Ayub just as Clayton was coming in. Amin Ayub seems to have developed his timing already, but with that said, Clayton Predator Silva lands a shot to the face. Spinning back fist attempt by Fierceness. Has the double, double underhooks, may try and trip an inside or outside leg here. Beautiful Successful trip. in, the Predator's back to standing. Predator pops right back up, but Amin still has those double underhooks. This is already turning into an incredible battle. As we know, Clayton Silva can snatch on a submission from anywhere, so you have to be respectful. Potentially, looked like he was trying to go for the back. Predator swarming. Right. So an opportunity to get in the hips. 
Hands are together and the fighter is down! Needs to be wary of the guillotine choke. Something Amin Ayub is particularly well versed at. He did beat Jamal Chan via first or third run guillotine in his brief CF debut. Head pops out. Expect a rain of elbows to come. Clayton Predador Silva applying pressure to the face so he can control his opponent while moving his head back. Amina Yu very carefully and cleverly controlling his opponent's arms, having mixed results. Clayton Silva just taking his time methodically, working through his processes right now. May try and just pop that leg out and escape either into the full mount or into the side control position. But as you say at the minute, Amin Ayub is doing everything he can to lock up the BJJ brown belt. Brave Nation, it can be a little bit hard to see, a little bit hard to appreciate. But what Amin Ayub is doing right now is absolutely fantastic. He just had a couple of short punches for his trouble. He's trying to get out onto his hook, uh, onto his hip and try. Armbar attempt! He's trying to hit that armbar typed in. Predator is out! This is a beautiful display of groundwork from both men. You can see Rolando D keeping a close eye on the action. I've also been talking to Sam Patterson today who said that he is the rightful number one contender and he is keeping a very close eye on this fight. Second submission attempt, Phil. There was a beginnings of an old plot to buy. I mean, fierce to say you, but it was denied by Predador. Predador using those long limbs to try and get off some offense, but again, needs to be wary of the Ome Plata. I mean, I hope showing just how much of a dangerous submission fighter he is as well. Absolutely frenetic pace set by both men in the opening stanzas. Surely this is not sustainable for five, five minute rounds in the championship bout. Phenomenal guard being shown by Ayub here. He's showing exactly what to do when you're on your back and you've got a dangerous world-class striker on top of you. He's controlling the hips Again, and to he's hit shifting that arm bar. looking for the arm bar. I can see a little bit of blood already. I'm not sure who that blood is coming from, but that looks like a deep arm bar. Predator Silva doing the right thing by staying compressed and stacking, but that looks like he's extending it. He may go belly down on this. Beautiful jiu-jitsu, beautiful defense, but Amin Ayub is relentless. He's already bloodied up the champion. Trying to get that elevator sweep. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, this is jiu-jitsu. This is using position, even when you're on bottom, to protect yourself and from that protected place, launch attacks. Try and use a sweep, which is flipping over until you're on top, the opponent's on, on the bottom, or try and go for a submission, as we, have, as we have seen repeatedly from Fierceness. Smart bicep control by Amin Ayub. He had a cheeky little cage grab just before to readjust his position. And when he's on his back, you can always see that he's trying to work the hips. He's trying to throw up a submission, trying to create angles for himself. Potentially, you could be seeing a, a first round here where a fighter is winning a fight off his back. That is, in a, that is the power of jiu-jitsu. No other martial art allows you to win a fight when you're on your back. That's a losing situation in every other art. Big elbow landed by the champion Clayton Silva just to close out the round. But again, Amin Ayub trying to work a submission with those hips. What a first round of action, Kirik. Absolutely fantastic round by both fighters. Phil, if you had to play judge, who would you call 10-9? Who would you call 9-10? Realistically, as I said in uh, the, the closing stanzas of the round there, potentially you're looking at Amin Ayub winning a fight off his back. And there you see some of the exchanges. Amin Ayub landing a lovely little short shot. Just glanced the chin of Clayton Silva with that spinning back fist. And some beautiful work here to get the takedown, but the champion springs right back up. Nice takedown work there, but again, the, the hips of Amin Ayub constantly throwing up the likes of an armbar. Very, very interesting fight unfolding here in Prospect. 
Decky Larkin making sure that there's no ice, no water on the floor, making sure that the corners and the seconds clean it thoroughly. There's not a lot gets past the bandit. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, this is Decky Larkin. He is the head of regulation here. He makes sure everything that happens in the Brave Combat Federation cage happens by the book. He felt a little bit of moisture on the floor. He wasn't happy with the job the corner did, drying it up, and so he's drying it up himself. That way there is no accidental slippage. An accidental slippage can turn a fight in a second. It can even turn an ankle or a knee. You don't want any excess liquid in the cage. I think Decky has now cleaned that. He has just about cleaned the Brave Combat Federation floor to his liking. And he is seconds away from starting up round two of this five round world title fight. It's on round two. Little touch of the gloves from both men showing that whilst they may be throwing barbs at each other on social media, they respect the skill level and endeavor of one another when inside the Brave Arena. Clayton keeping the hands a little bit low. Tries to spin him back fist, but Amin always has a counter hook loaded. Side kick to the knee from Fierceness. Very smart technique to use on, a, on an opponent that's got longer reach. Nice hook again there from Amin Ayo, predicated off the kick from Clayton Silva. Interesting exchange. Fierceness took a calf kick, but he went straight through and landed that left hook. That's a little window into his thinking right now. Even if he gets hit, he's going to continue moving forward, trying to dictate his fight. But realistically, Carrick, there's only so many of those types of kicks you can take before your, your stance, before your, your pop and your shots is impeded. It's 100% the case. If that tibialis muscle gets hit directly three times, can even be two or one, you can lose control of the ankle and no longer be able to move efficiently. Oh, charging forward is Amin Ayub, landing a big overhand. And his counter striking is looking very clean here. Bound to be growing in confidence with the shots he's landing. Already marked the champion up and bloodied the nose. Predator Silva now is trying to measure his opponent. He's trying to get a clear, clear sense of his opponent's speed, timing, and reach. Once he feels like he gets that, he can start to counter. You can see another contender in the lightweight division, Ahmed Amir, keeping a close eye on the action again. Him and Clayton almost got into it at the weigh-ins yesterday, so be interesting to see his take on the fight. Brave Nation, watch the eyes of Predator Silva right now. His concentration is at 100%. He is taking in everything that his opponent is showing him, trying to download it and use it to time counters of his own. I mean, you're trying to land that leaping hook, and he's doing a great job of, of almost fighting at range against the taller guy. He's, he's very intelligently using that sidekick to the lead's thigh, possibly to the lead knee, to keep his opponent at, at a distance that he's comfortable with. And again, you saw that calf kick land, and you saw fierceness fight through it and land those shots. That is the heart of a warrior right here. If things don't go his way initially, he's going to continue moving forward until they do. Predator now trying to initiate the clinch and get the takedown. The first fight fought mostly on the ground. Second round so far. Sorry, first round fought mostly on the ground. Second round, more of a stand-up battle between the two, but. Clinch being initiated right now, and again, it is that nasty zapping part, energy zapping part of mixed martial arts carry. Fierceness decided he wanted to fight at distance, separates. One kick not too far off the mark from Predator. Interesting adaption, interesting new tac uh, tactics that we're seeing from Clayton Predator Silva. Nice roll under from Amin Ayub, and he's really starting to chop down that lead leg with low calf kicks, with beautiful push kicks. He is, Silva may launch front kicks to the face of his own. He's trying to counter those, those long range kicks with his own longer range, kick, longer range kicks, like that hook kick attempt to the head. But that's something that Amin is doing so well. He's landing his shots in the pocket and managing to get out without taking too much damage. Thus far, Phil, I am calling 
this round for Amin Fierceness Ayub. Clayton Predator on in on the takedown. He has the clinch, he has that over under clinch position with his arms being so long and his legs being so long, there's potential for a trip takedown here. Clayton Silva is a brilliant fighter. He's trying different strategies. He tried to punch, he tried to kick at mid range, he tried to kick it out at a farther range, and now he's trying his luck in the clinch. He's trying his luck in the 50 50 against the Brave Combat Federation cage. Nice little foot stomp there from Amin Ayub, or as Nolo Keith would say, a dirty, dirty foot stomp. Nice little short elbow. And again, fight being contested in the clinch, and that's a great knee from Amin Ayub. He feels like he's hurt, Clayton Silva. And there's the take on good use of the wizard by Amin Ayub, but he wasn't able to spring back up. Predator may just take these 10 seconds to get the win back on his seals because that knee, that pop knee to the lever, I think hurt Clayton Silva. It did, and he did what he needed to do. He got himself into a situation where he could rest momentarily on top. Took advantage of it. He's taking a slow walk back to his corner. Phil, call that round for me, 10-9, 9-10. An incredibly tight round. I do give the slight advantage to Amin Ayub. I think he did have the advantages in the striking. He was landing the cleaner shots. He was being a little bit more proactive as opposed to reactive in the fight. We are one on that, Phil. I think that the champion has got to do something a little bit differently. He's been responding tactically. When his opponent strikes and maybe outstrikes him to a degree, he'll move to kicks. Then he gets outstruck by kicks and he throws kicks on the outside. When that doesn't go his way, he moves into the inside, into the clinch into the 50-50, but I think what he needs to do now, in three words, is turn it up. And this is, both men do look a little bit tired, but it's not because they feel, it's not because they're not conditioned well, it's because that they are literally forcing each other to expel as much energy as they can to get the upper hand in this fight. Phil Decky Larkin actually had to move fierceness back. He's so eager to jump back into this fight. He was walking to the center cage. Decky pushed him back, said, so get back to your corner, son. And it's on, round three. Again, Amin Ayub charging forward, taking the center. Does look a little bit the fresher fighter, Carrick. He is. Amin Ayub feels like he won the first two rounds by however close a, a, a margin. He feels like he's got the range of his opponent. He feels like he has the advantage both on the outside and the inside, and he's now going to press it. Clayton now with some beautiful movement to cut the angles on Clayton Silva. Very, very slick head movement as Ayub moved forward. I think he did get the advantage of that exchange. Forced Clayton Predator Silva into the 50-50, and now Ayub has reversed it, and he's pushed his opponent back up against the cage. Brave Nation, when your opponent's hips are stuck against that cage, the strikes are no longer effective. Momentarily, Clayton Silva looked like he was about to take the back like he does so well, but one thing I've noticed is Clayton Silva's moving back in straight lines with his chin a little bit high. I think if you see Amin Ayub try and throw maybe threes and fours, he may catch Clayton Silva going backwards. That certainly is his intent. We have seen a multiplication in his attack. He started off with single attacks and then doubles. He's moved his way up to triple shots now. Would not surprise me if at some point in this round he flurries and goes for it. Green Silva's strikes are coming a little bit more labored than they were in the first round. That mic area is something I expected to see just a little bit more. When Clayton Silva wasn't doing well against the side kicks, he threw that front kick up to the head, very intelligent technique. It, with a shorter opponent, even when the opponent is very far on the outside, it allows you to land. Uppercut just shy off the mark from Amin Ayub. Clayton Silva looks like he has the hands connected. Big take down oh. from the champion. Phil, it's hard to take him down. Sometimes it's even harder to keep him. I mean, I have momentarily thought about the guillotine. He switched it to the opposite side. He has that knee shield in. He's in guillotine guard right now. Arm in. But right now, if he holds on to that, there is a potential von Flew choke here for Clayton Silva. I mean, I does the right thing, lets the head go, trying to frame off on the arm. 
Yeah. Needs to dig in for the Isso. underhook and get underneath the body of Predador. That's a good job to recover half guard. Predador inching his way up. He's inch, he inched his way up to that left underhook. He inched his way up into that top half guard, which can successfully be used to control the opponent's hips. And very shortly, you should see him posture back and try and land some shots. I mean, I will be able to recover full guard. And as we saw in round one, he is incredibly dangerous off his back. Puts a foot on the hip, may try and cut an angle here. Clayton Predator Silva very intelligently taking the fight close to the cage. When your opponent is next to the cage, sideways, half the direction that his hips can go in is removed. And you only need to fear the hips popping out and setting up a submission in one direction. That makes it much easier oh, look for at the, the top fighter. The hips. There's the arm. There is an arm bar in place now. Can he get full extension on that arm bar trying to dig in mage look to rule champion clayton silver the angle of the elbow is not quite there he's trying just to peel those hands apart and hip into it this is a tangled weave of bodies that looks tight can he get the point of the elbow and the champion is out this is incredibly exciting Woo! jiu -jitsu. brave nation that one hurt People talk about how strikes hurt, submission attempts don't. That one hurt. With each submission attempt, Amin Ayub is edging ever so slightly closer. Trying to isolate the arm of the champion and throw those hips up, throw the legs up for the arm bar. There's there again. again. Oh, that one looks a little bit deeper. The point of the elbow looks right in against the, the fulcrum. Sweep is almost completed. Oh, that looks tight. Can he get full extension on it? He's trying to rule the champion. Fantastic defense from Clayton Silva. He's doing the right thing. He grabs his bicep here, almost like a rear naked choke to defend and stack in. And then you can start to jimmy that arm out just a little bit. Phil, that elbow is out. The elbow is now clear. The fighter on top is safe, but he is not winning these exchanges. Clayton Silva trying to, to get momentarily that arm bar again, but what an exciting display of jiu-jitsu. Great offensive jiu-jitsu, great submission defense. Big shot, Roy heard him! Shot from the inside! He heard him right at the end of the third round. Amin Ayub showing his diversity of attacks. First with the submissions, then with big strikes. Predator Silva sucking wind hard as he walks back to his corner. Somebody get a stool underneath that man so he can recover. Amin Ayub, no question, 10-9. There you see the massive takedown from Clayton Silva. But from there, it was Amin Ayub who was being the most dangerous again. Potentially, Amin Ayub has won a round off his back. Once again, that is the power of Jiu-Jitsu. He rocked him with those big shots. Deggy Larkin forced to step in at the end of the round there. Sometimes in mixed martial arts, we get overwhelming displays of the power of wrestling. They're not always exciting. What we're getting here is a display of the power of jujitsu, and it is exciting. A lot of excess moisture on Amin Ayub here. You just, you have to wonder how much those uppercuts are going to affect Clayton Silva. He's only had a minute to recover, and it was right at the end. Phil, shots to the body, as we know, are cumulative. If you take a shot to the body 30 seconds later, the next one is going to feel worse than if you hadn't. Shots to the head or not. 10 to 15 seconds on the outside after a big head shot. Ordinarily, the fighter's head is clear. I think Clayton Selva's head is clear, but I believe he is down three rounds to none now. I believe in order to win this fight, he needs to stop his opponent. And I think you're gonna see Amin Ayub put the pressure on from the very first moment, knowing that he hurt the champion at the end of that third round. Clayton Silva just teasing with the knee there, letting Amin Ayub know that it's there. Phil, we're gonna to start to see Fierceness counter more aggressively. He's not simply gonna block a shot when it comes in. Once he's countered that shot, either by a head movement or another defensive technique, he's gonna to start to swarm his opponent. 
Again, the shots coming just that little bit more labored for Clayton Silva. Amin Ayub looking like the fresher fighter, throwing the spinning black fist, just shy with it. Now putting the pressure on the champion, working the body a little bit. Nice long range kicks from the champion. Nice head movement again from Amin Ayub. Just evades the strike and replies with his own. Phil, these two are playing a dangerous game right now. Oh, he's standing in the pocket. Oh, he's sending it. He's out. It's over. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new lightweight champion of the world. And new and new champion of the world. I mean, fierceness. Are you? Take a bow, young man. He is now at the top of the table. He has knocked out the champion and definitively claimed the lightweight championship of the world. Absolutely savage performance against an absolutely savage fighter. Well, the lightweight title picture just became wide open. You have Sam Patterson, you have Ahmed Amir, you have Rolando D, you have the new champion, Amin Ayub, you have the former champion, Luan Miao Santiago. The lightweight division is stacked, it is on fire. Phil, not only do we have Rolando D, he's actually standing by the cage, trying to get a piece of him right now. Legend flowing through my face. Rolando D is finish. in the building. Ahmed Amir is in the building. Sam Patterson is watching at home. Our president, Mohammed the Hawk Shahid, is slowly entering the Brave Combat Federation cage in order to wrap the belt around the champion. I would love to see that finish back, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Charging forward, the chin of Clayton was up, and boom, there you go. Big shot, Takey Larkin diving right in. Doesn't take a punch this time like he did from Mo Fakhreddin. Clayton Silva was going back with that chin a little bit too high in the air. Amin Ayub recognized it and finished with a beautiful flurry of strikes to become the new Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world. Brave Nation, what an incredible main event at Brave CF 44. Unbelievable fight. This comes to an end at one minute, 23 seconds of round number four. Your winner by knockout and new Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Amin Fierceness. Ah, go! Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man, the mixed martial artist, with a professional record of 13 wins and three losses. He stands 179 centimeter tall and weighs already 96.5 kilograms. Representing Tiger Muay Thai and fighting out of Lebanon. Give it up for Muhammad, the latest for And his opponent, fighting on the red corner, 
This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of eight wins and no losses. He stands 179 centimeters tall and weighs already 104.2 kilograms. Representing KR Tribe and fighting out of Russia. Put your hands together for Azamat, the professional. Man For further instructions, Aiden Murray. Gentlemen, this is for the belt. You do know what this is what I expect. Listen to my calls at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, back your corners, come out fighting. Good luck. Back and go. Back and go. Let's make some noise! Kingdom of the way! KHK Openweight Tournament is upon us. Mohamed Fakhardin, Azamat Murzakhanov, we are on the way. Here we go. Again, that darting, fencing style. Looking to blitz Fakhardin. Fakhardin going to try and utilize them heavy leg kicks we've seen work for him. But look at the size of the legs of Murzakhanov. You can already see a little bit of swelling after one kick from Mo Fakhardin. Kicking an oak. Tentative right now. Morzakanov using his legs to move in and out. Mo Fakhardin trying to break those Big legs. Left hand. Oh, he caught him! Heavy shot, and this is the power He's differential. Morzakanov raining down shots. Mohamed Fakhardin doing everything he can to stay in. He turns the spin at the elbow. Trying to stay in like a monster. On a shield, change of levels by Morzakanov and looking to land hundreds of shots from top. How is Mohamed Fakhardin still in this fight? Both these men are absolute monsters, savages with such heart endeavor. Where's that kind of, he was, it looks seconds away, but somehow Mohamed Fakhardin stayed in this fight. And that is an illustration of the fighter of Mohamed Fakhardin, but now he has to contest with this beast on top. Fakhardin trying to dig in for that underhook, trying to make it work for him. But Mirza Kanov just like a fire blanket. Mirza Kanov, we said it in the fights earlier, the power he possesses in that left hand and illustrated beautifully there, but credit to Mohamed Fakhardin. He's, has he got his senses back? He's trying to push out the knee of Mirza Kanov. Mirza Kanov needs to be stayed cool and calm and then landed that stunning overhand and left hook. Mozakanov needs to be wary of the up, up kick here from Mo Fakhardin. You can see him staying upright. Potentially allowing Mo Fakhardin some time to recover here. But expect it, dies into the guard and expect that marauding and vicious, nasty, horrendous ground and pound. He's just pinning him up against the cage right now. I think he's going to elevate the legs and work from there. He may triangle the legs a la Khabib. Mo's got his fence back up against the fence. He's halfway up. He's got to be careful. Three Stop. quarters. Even the left hands landing here, Kirik are fighting and power by Mo's off. He's up. Now he's got to try and pummel in and reverse the position. He needs to be wary of a trip takedown. Just Mo's may bump him off the cage and then implement a, an inside or outside trip. There he is. Here we go. Back in Mo Fakhardin back to where he wants to be. All back caught with the job. Back in the battlefield, but. Right on the toes is Murzakhanov again. And nice inside leg kick by Fakhardin, but he needs to get his back off the cage, you feel. Easier said than done. I'd like to see him implement a little bit of movement, but then again, you take into consideration that this is his second fight of the night. So much respect for both these men. Unbelievable. Ooh, we have an ultimate fighter moment where we end up paying out two fighters. <laughs> Fakhardin just trying to wing that counter right. You can't blame him because the shots and power are coming in that he's taking on board. Well, that's a nice kick from Fakhardin. Oh, he's, uh, he's, he's hurt. He's hurt his foot. Referee saying, let's go. Referee saying. No Fakhardin calling him in. Mohamed Fakhardin going, now let's continue to fight. Beautiful head kick from Murzakhanov. Moments away from shaking hands, then to throwing up the head kick. Murzakhanov was almost showing mercy there, and Fakhardin was like, no, I want this. The heart. Of Mohammed Fakhruddin. It's oh, oh, he's caught him. It's it's over. It's all over. Wow! A hellacious left uppercut by Azamat Gordon Kanoff has separated Mohammed Fakhruddin from his senses. Running the professional Those 
Yo, I, I said it during the promo, but this has all the makings of a fight of the night contender, and that is saying something considering the quality of fights we have had tonight. A legitimate number one contender in the welterweight division in Abdul Ragimov Kirik. This is a potential for fight of the night and fight of the year. This isn't just country versus country. This is continent versus continent. You're looking at the top-ranked welterweight in Europe versus the top-ranked welterweight in the Middle East. And in fact, you're looking at the face of mixed martial arts in the Middle East. I have won it, the belt in devastating fashion. A would-be king knight when he knocked out Carlson Harris. It's something that El Sawai likes to do. It's download the information, have a look mm -hmm. at what his opponent offers. On the flip side of that, Phil, Abdul Ragimov. He's a bit quirky in how he approaches. It's not your standard style striking. Your striking is underrated, but it's hard to predict, hard to read. What I like about his striking is that it's almost herky-jerky. It has a strange, unique flow to it. And by doing that, he disrupts the rhythm of his opponent's striking. Not only that, he is one of the greatest exponents of what I like to call shutdown jiu-jitsu, whereby he shuts down your jiu-jitsu with his grappling. Heavy leg kick landed by the champion. Brave Combat Federation is changing the face of mixed martial arts. That's why Brave is able to land sponsors like Air Arabia. Thank you, Air Arabia, official sponsor of Brave Combat Federation. You can almost see, as we were alluding to, the download of the software, and Jiraiya is just having a look to see what Abdul is offering, a lot of feints and how he's reacting to that. And that's something we've seen in his title crown night. When he eventually just picked the pace up and went at Carlson Harris and got the finish. We see Giraffe fainting that uppercut a number of times. I'm wondering as he do that to, to, to ward off the takedown attempt from Abdul Ragimov, or is that something pertaining to uh, another combination that he, that, that he then wants to set up? Yeah, good footwork and Abdul Ragimov is circling off to his left, but each time the footwork of al he just cuts him off, keeping the cage small. Look at the setup, and you can just see the respect that Abdul has for the champion. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the first round of his first title defense. There's that feint of the uppercut again. All different looks, they're both just strong fates at each other, and both is sense of having a look at what he, each one offers. Both men very calm. Strike the lead right up the middle with that teeth. Abdul Abdul Ragimov, the slightly smaller man, but we saw in his fight at Brave 17 in Lahore, Pakistan, against Rodrigo Caballero, that he has no issue fighting a bigger man and controlling a bigger man. Referees just having a word, saying, gentlemen, we need to see some action here. I can understand why the referee doing it. Not a lot of shots were being thrown, but in fairness, each fighter was having a look and feints and seeing what each is offering. And this is a five-round title fight. Referee got what he wanted. Fighters are turning it up now. It's almost as if neither fighter wants to be the first one to pull the trigger. Neither wants to be the first fighter to show their hand. Um, right up against the cage. Jiraiya just trying to get at him. It's what you said earlier on, Kirk, in a fight earlier on tonight's card. You don't want to get your foot back up against the cage, against a striker. And Jiraiya Asui is an exquisite striker, world class. So he can understand, I suppose, the patient and the patience is shown but Abdu Ragimov cut the kick and gets the takedown. And here we're here we're gonna see just why I think he's such a great exponent of grappling for MMA. So intelligent with his movement and so so fluid with his movement. For full mount and takes the back now Zaraya needs to be careful here. Abdu Ragimov's got his head around got the neck he's got the neck here Oh, that looks, he is one of the greatest exponents of the bare naked choke. He switched to palm to palm. This looks palm deep. to palm and stretching out Jiraiya too. The champion, it, he looks he's okay. The chin, it's not underneath the chin now. But that'll show you in a split second after Ragnarok turned his first round on his head. And Jiraiya the well there. Not to be caught, but...
see what the champion offers after that threaded takedown. We're noting it was a cut kick followed by the right hand, and he used the right hand to close the distance. Pulls the two legs from underneath the champion, and as I'm on his back, that was beautiful, the distance in which he covered mm -hmm. there. The referee doesn't need to warn them about submitting in the second one. Just using that knee slide. That's also trapped the right arm. The champion trying to get that out of there. Has... Ragimov wasted no time, Phil. Apologies in getting it to the mat. He has that arm. He had that arm just around the neck, behind the back of the neck of Jara Al Salawi. He was using that to control everything, everywhere he puts his hand, everything he does is for a reason. And then transitions in the mark. Again, gives Jara just enough space to give up the back. It's a beautiful illustration of grappling for MMA. Plenty of time on the clock now for him to work. Steps back into mount. Jiraiya, to his credit, trying to roll and get out of there, but each time Abdul rolled with him and ends up in the dominant position. He's got vicious, vicious ground and pound from this position as well. So expect the posture and razor blade elbows. Jiraiya cannot stay flat backed in this position. He needs to get to a hip, he needs to shrimp out, he needs to pop up his own hips, he needs to do something. Trying to push down. With the recover position, but I'll do drag him off to keep the aware. The home crowd trying to get behind the champion. Lots of time. We're almost in the center of the cage in this position. Champion trying to book his way out of there. Abdul Abdurragimov just seems happy to wear on Jura right now for a little bit. In anticipation of Jura exploding and perhaps exposing something. He almost baits you into yeah. something. He almost gives you a little space thinking you're going to get out. It's Jaya you hook it to the hill. Then again, Abdul Rag Ragimov yeah. just on him right again with the trip take time. That's why he's done very well to get back to where he is now. But can he get oh, separation? Beautiful. Jumps on the back again. Abdul Ragimov. That wrist control that is allowed, so I need to get out of there. Excellent work by the champion to get back to his feet. Interestingly, Abdul Rahimov walked himself up in the cage, just leaned on the cage wall. Trademark head kick attempt. Mm -hmm. Champion, if he wasn't acutely aware after the first round, he certainly is now after the distance covered and the speed in which Abdi Regimov done that. Maybe going back to tease that uppercut, spins. Jiraiya out of the way. Take the right hand and came up with it. Corkscrew style jab. Making that right uppercut again, feeling. I think you're right, it's the almost ward him off. If you're coming for the takedown, or coming for your chin. Mm. Abdul Regimov happy to sit in front of Jiraiya. It's almost like he wants Jiraiya to overcommit to his strikes and then duck under and secure the takedown. Nice right hand. Abdul calls it on, beckons it on. Being a little bit tentative now, it's kind of a cat and mouse game. A minute left of the second round. And you can see that tentativeness by the champion. He just doesn't want to give him too much, expel too much. Nice hook finish with a leg hit, though. That's what he needs to do. He needs to finish the combinations so it doesn't give Abdul Regimov the opportunity to counter with a takedown. I don't fully understand Abdurragimov's footwork. Maintaining the distance he is is not winning, not keep getting him ahead on the judges' scorecards. That will get him ahead in the judges' scorecards. That's how he went for the, the uppercut. It was the right hand of Abdurragimov that landed. Nice leg kick. Starting to chain his attacks to get a little better. Yeah, That's high this time, and the champion is starting to get loose.
back, no feeling his opponent out. There it is. Just showing different looks with the hands. To, mm -hmm. It's almost snake charm. I'd be ragging him off. Ragimov is walking forward a little bit more. What you were calling for, Kieran, you're saying just going backwards isn't going to get you. Notice on the judges, so he's the one that starting to take the forward step here in the third round. I think his corner had a word with him, and he took it to heart. Just out of range with it. Left hand is also a trying to trap Abdi Ragimov in up against the cage again. Fight the score, gentlemen. Very difficult fight to score, though. Again, that's uh, that second round for me was was very difficult because of the ground dominance that Abdul yep. Abdul Ragimov had, and then the subsequent kicking game. Nice body shot, but the kick was caught. He done well to get the leg back down in there, but it was a good shot. And on the low single, grabs the ankle. The balance by the champion. The referee just asking. He's calling a timeout. Is he going to dock a point? This is interesting. It looks he, like a, it almost looked like he was going to dock a point instantly. I, and I think he's just going to chew him out. No, he hit. No, no point. Just a strong warning. Again, it's the speed in which Abdu Ragimov covers the distance and gets a hold of that leg. I think it's surprising also, eh? You can really see why he's a, a no-gi IBJJF European champion. Though. Big right hand by Alsawayu. Wara well, though, rolled with the punch. Switch his stance to throw that heavy left kick. Our champion Janal Salawi really starting to open up with his strikes. Seems to be finding his range, counting the distance with those kicks as well. Starting to stalk his opponent now as well, pushing him up against the cage where he wants him, allow him to open up the arsenal. But one thing I find so fascinating about Abdul Abdul Ragimov, he looks so nonchalant, like almost like he doesn't want to be there at times, and then bursts into life with these takedowns. That's why he again captures his opponent against the fence, heavy leg kick again. Almost like the sound of a baseball bat cracking across the leg. And a change. Uh, so why he committed to a right hand and Abdi Ragimov closed that and used that. Just burst into life again from looking so nonchalant and chill, bursting into life. A dog with a bone with that take down and again goes for the back. Looking for the hooks. That's why he done well thus far to not allow it. He's got the left hook in on the opposite side. Bloody nose as well, and Abdu Ragimov. And then shots, first and open the nose. And a shake him off the back and excellent control Ooh. by Abdu Ragimov to stay there. It looked like he was for sure coming off the back. For a second there, I thought he was going to try and drop down for a knee bar. Interestingly, the blood pouring from Abdu Ragimov's nose could aid him here getting the choke. Indeed, not indeed. Happy to isolate a rest and just slowly try and work underneath the chin of Dural Salawi. And try so shots as well, just to soften up the champion and try to get him to defend to expose the neck. That's why he back up again, looking to shake him off. He may be great. I think he was initially attempting that knee bar. Ragimov pulls him back in now. He's trying to take that heel home with him. Perhaps transition into calf bars. No doubt. Out. Excellent work. Interesting with the nose now for the breathing. The first nose. Harder to breathe. He's going to open the mouth. He's leaving more susceptible. He will knock out. Jiraiya is stepping it up here. Head movement for Abdul Abdul Ragimov to set up the single leg takedown. Head pops out of Abdul Ragimov. And transition straight into Martin again. 
Will it be a case of giving him enough space? He doesn't seem to have enough time. Time looks like it's going to run out. Abdurragimov's nose is no longer bleeding, indicates it did not break. Gloves. Again. Alsawaii will want to walk down, had a leg kick, just buckled it, the lead leg as well. Maybe they're starting to tally up and wear on the challenger. I don't think Abdul Abdurragimov has checked one of the kicks yet either. He seems to be absorbing them. When you're fighting someone like Jiraiya Alsawaii, when he is kicking you, he's probably kicking you in exactly the same point each time with his accuracy. Mm -hmm. He is indeed. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, those kicks are landing with the force of a baseball bat, or if you will, a cricket bat. These are not light kicks. And Abdul Raghimov playing the game, I'm happy to sit against the fence and invite Jiraiya Alsawaii in. Champion shown excellent fighter IQ and not willing to fall into that baited trap. That's just a kick, and that's the reason why he's happy for you to come forward and grab you as, as soon as you throw your attack. It's a dangerous strategy, but it seems to be paying off for him. Almost a fly catcher just sitting waiting, and as soon as you throw something, snap, and he's in on a takedown. Excellent sprawl by Jiraiya there. Two big moments for the champion. If Abdul Abdul Ragimov is going to attempt those kinds of takedowns, he needs to set them up with his hands. That's Abdul Ragimov who's taking the forward steps, but Jiraiya circles back into the center of the cage. Blood is starting to stem from the nose again. Excellent sprawl again. That's two in a row now that the champion has sprawled. Maybe a little labor coming to turn, and the kick was just off target. Abdul Ragimov looking to slow down here. Janal Salawi turning up the heat, finding his range. Again, that uppercut it, uh, coming in on the takedown and he's fighting this off, but Abdul Regimov is in on the single, goes high. The champion gets away, that's three failed takedown attempts in a row. That will start to wear on Abdul Regimov. I'd like to see Zeraya go back to that leg kick, but again, that single. Jason, the champion down. Oh! Big body kick, huge kick. You can really see it's wearing, starting to wear. Champion, beautiful defense. That's four in a singular round. Maybe he's starting to get the timing and the tail of Abdul Ragamov's takedown. And again, he's not rushing in with his attacks, Kerrick. He's staying composed, picking his shots. It's very intelligent. If he overcommits, he'll get put in his back. A couple of times he's thrown that left uppercut, lead left uppercut. 
It's as you say, Phil. Sometimes Abdi Ragimov looks like he's no interest in being here. And next minute he just explodes into action. It's a good sprawl again, a wise sprawl and base. And Abdi Ragimov trying to reel his left leg in. I think Abdul Abdul Ragimov might be starting to feel fatigued because he's shooting in without setting up the strikes. And when he does strike, they're non committal. You know, they, they look laboured. In comparison to round one and two, where he used the overhand right to get in or catch and close that distance at such speed, that's not the case now. Exactly. But he's still got a, a leg. Gonna look to trip maybe. And another, that's five failed takedowns. The champion. as well on the chin of Abdul Regimov. Again, dies in with no setup. The champion sprawls and will the tax here will be some hammer fist to the side of the head. He's grabbing the ankle as well. Very intelligent to stop Abdul Abdul Regimov basing out on that foot to propel himself forward for the takedown. Referee just advising to pick your target, make sure you're not hitting the back of the head. Just turning that into elbows again. Almost looking at the referee, he goes, that good, that okay? Referee has said no. Now that's a second infraction. This is going to be a point. That's this. It's almost like Raya Alsaway was looking at the referee to ask, are these clean shots? Point taken. Ladies and gentlemen, Brave Nation, imagine a cell phone at the top of your head. Run that down. That's the area that cannot be touched. So given, given how tightly contested the first couple of rounds were, how telling is that point deduction going to be? Well, I think potentially this is going to lead to a 9-9 round here because I had, for me, watching this, the champion was winning this round. Yeah. But again, it could be vital, round one and two. Should I also wait, he's trying to take that point back with his fist, beautiful uppercut. is after that point deduction. Do, what if his corner told him? Do they think he's ahead? Does he feel like he needs to pull that round back, perhaps? Mm. I'd like to see Jarrah Salawi open up a little bit more with those low leg kicks that he was having such great success with. Take down. He may go for the trip. Big sprawl, beautiful sprawl. Well, Salawi. And again, diving in with a takedown, and now it's Jiraiya Al Sawali who's got Abdul Ragamos back briefly. Abdul Abdul Ragamos rules. Very dangerous and very active guard, hence why Jiraiya Al Sawali chose to stand up there. Yeah. Very intelligently chose to stand. Big body kick. A left kick. Four into the body, and again, oh. throws it again. This time, Abdul Ragamos tried to catch it. Jiraiya probably won't go back to that kick for a moment. He'll give him a different look. Go high. A couple of times there, as he threw the body kick, Abdi Regimov went low to catch, mm -hmm. so maybe go high. He can do surprise on the job. Look low, William High. In on the single, big sprawl by the champion. Yep. Strength of Abdi Regimov just to pull Zeraya up there. 
Lifting high, crotching. Zaraya out of way again, sir, because that was the fence is phenomenal here. Must be said, Abdi Begum not setting them up a little tighter. Needs to be careful, the referee looking close. Feel me once, shame on me, feel me twice. Jaram may even try and take the back here if he wants to get hooks in, flatten the out and finish him with strikes. Look that wrist control perhaps in Randy's shots in this position he's in right now. So he's quite intelligent, he's got, shots. The, he's got the hand inside the thigh, which again keeps the opponent in place. Both fighters have a responsibility where the back of the head foul is concerned. If the bottom fighter turns his head suddenly yeah. and a shot lands that was intended for a legal, legal target, it is not illegal. Right, risk control and landing shots here, and it's up to Abdi Regimov to improve his position. The roar goes up in the crowd. Throwing all shots from all different angles, coming from the side and underneath, and Abdi Regimov needs to improve and get out of here. What does he do to get out of here, Phil? I would like to see him perhaps roll, or at the very least, turn it in towards Jadah Al Salawi. Invite Jadah into his guard because then we know for sure. There's there a roll. Uh, be roll Al Salawi says, no, thank you, sir. Back to the feet and it is a very visible, tired Abdu Regimov. As this fight has gone on, the takedowns are coming and sprawl after sprawl by the champion. And I think that's making Jadah Al Salawi more confident with his striking. He's showing a greater number uh, of strikes with the hands because he knows that he can he can sprawl on those labored takedowns of Abdul Abdul Ragimov. With all he's had success now, he, he has to be careful. He goes back to that same position, held the head down, and just made his way around to the back of his opponent and risk control, landing right hands. Knees are perfectly positioned to avoid the victory roll for the knee bar. Just brilliant positioning by the champion. Well, that one may have been to the back of the head. The way Abduragamov is moving his head gives him some responsibility for those shots that mm -hmm. land to the back. Zaraya just looked to his corner as well, and he's happy to step away. And Big left hand, and he's in a much better position, throwing heavy elbows. With a minute left of the fight, he may look to finish with these strikes. The biggest corner must have told him what was left, and he thought, yeah, I've got plenty in the tank, let's start emptying it. Championship performance in the championship rounds. The fight has literally been beaten out of Abdul Abduragamov. To prove this volume of strikes.
4746, Blue Corner. Your second judge scores about 47, 46, Red Corner. And your third judge scores about 47, 46. For your winner by split decision, and new Brave Combat Federation welterweight champion of the world, Abdul the Conqueror. is three, five minute rounds in a catch weight bout of 77 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 76.96 kilograms. Representing Gladiator Fight Gym and fighting out of Brazil, please welcome Mateus Miranda. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 185 centimeters tall and weighs already 76.8 kilograms. Representing KHK, Team Bahrain, and Boxing Squad, and fighting out of Nice, France. Put your hands together for Axel Sola. Real interesting fight in progress here. Miranda, fantastic jiu-jitsu fighter, fantastic exponent of the art. May try and take Axel down right from the get-go because Axel has incredible boxing out of that southpaw stance. You can see he's very light on the feet. Miranda, a little bit more stoic in his approach right from the get-go. Touch your gloves and we are away. Look for Sola to use the jab to devastating effect and looks the much bigger man in there. Phil, if you put Mateusz's fights on a graph, it's 108, 59, 46, then 35 seconds. Nice kick to the body. Oh, huge kick. Beautiful timing on it from Axel Sola. Sola just so calm in there. You forget that this is only his fifth professional bout. See him goes for Miranda. He's diving on a leg without setting it up. How good is the takedown defense of Sola? Finds himself taken down. Phil, the takedown defense of Alex Sola is brilliant. We're so seeing something even better though. The jiu-jitsu of Miranda trying to get that first round finish. How good is the submission defense of Axel Sola? Brilliant. And this is usually around the time that statistically Miranda finishes his fights. Trying to work to get that second hook in. Brave Nation, Axel Sola is trying to stop Miranda's left foot from getting in the hip. He completely shut it down. Miranda now transitioning potentially to a leg lock. That too completely shut down. Great work from Axel Sola. The awareness, the acuteness he is showing there. And he may just be sneaking his way. Maybe looking for a Darce choke. What a feather in his cap this would be. Good work for Miranda to get up, but may eat some shots here. Free him off elbow potentially for Axel Sola if he wants it. Miranda looking for a back take. Another big takedown, landing right into side control, and this is very dangerous territory, territory for Axel Sola. Needs to dig in for the underhook and try to work back for guard, turn into his opponent, get on the hip, try and work, maybe even get the half guard back. Miranda very wisely not hanging on to any submission attempt for too long. Looks for one, doesn't work, looks for something else. I think he's trying to work for a Kimura here. Looking for a Kimura right here. Trying to step over the head, isolate the arm. Decides to let it go. Knee on belly, right through to almost. In the quarter guard now, half guard, knee shield in place from bottom. 
Oh, he's leg lock attempt. We've got the forearm in on the heel. Oh, he's trying to take that home, but he slips out, and now he's going to get punished for it by Axel Sola. Roll to the knee bar. Victory roll, looking for the knee bar now. Doesn't quite have it flush. May look. Looking for an for inside heel. heel hook now. Almost has the heel and the arm. Thought he may have transitioned to an omeplata there. Does not. Toe hold, looking for the. Going back to the heel hook. This is dangerous, dangerous territory, and Axel Sola needs to be very, very careful here. Can't just rip the leg out, or he could do himself some serious damage. Needs to keep everything as compacted as he can so he doesn't let Miranda extend the hips fully and get the submission. And right now, Axel Sola making things a little bit more even with some big shots. Axel Sola, Axel Sola showing brilliant submission defense there. What Mateusz did so much that impressed me, Phil, wasn't how hard he went for any single submission, it was how well he transitioned. It must be said, this is the longest that Miranda has spent in the cage in one singular outing. This, may, this actually, I believe, is longer than the time he spent in the cage in the accumulation of his four fights. The accumulated time in the cage was 328, and we are now just coming up to surpass it. Just about to surpass it. Nice work from Axel Solo, just coming up underneath the arm. These don't need to be concussive shots, but they need it to be a cumulative damage. Solo now showing positional dominance, Brave Nation. Doing a great job of just taking his time, and Miranda's not really offering much here at all. Solo doing what's called a tight waist. You reach around the opponent, reach around the back, hold on to his belly, and this is what you do. These are on the arm. A lot of these shots are on the arm, though. Miranda needs to do something a little bit more proactive rather than just cover up. So, Solo being very intelligent, throwing the shots into the arm. When those are blocked fully, throws the uppercut. When those become blocked, goes back to hitting. All Axel Sola right now. Nice shot selection from Sola. Good job from Miranda to reclaim guard, but Sola working beautifully inside the guard. Shades of Tito Ortiz back in the day. Someone like Miranda still very dangerous, as we said. A 2021 World Nogi Grappling Champion. Oh, big elbow smashed down the middle from Axel Sola. Definitive statement made at the end of the round, and I don't know if we are going to see Gabriel Miranda making it to a second round here, ladies and gentlemen. He is still on his back. Still, that was an incredible first half of the round, my friend. Here's Miranda, and that was an unbelievable second half of the round by Axel Soli. He absolutely beat the fight out of his opponent. I am so glad you said fight instead of something else there, Gary. Thought you were going to get the full counsel, but Miranda. Of the man who started the run so aggressively. And Derek, I said that potentially fatigue could be a factor, given that Miranda had never been beyond their first round in mixed martial arts. And Sola really, really turned it up. We've got multiple things at play here. There's physical fatigue, but there's also mental fatigue. When you think you've got a submission and it ends up being taken away from, from, from you, it's very, very tough mentally, and that happens over and over and over again. Sola shut him down. I'd like to see Axel put it on him. Axel Sola finds himself on his back again. Again, Miranda, like a dog with a bone when it comes to the lower limb submissions. Axel Sola taking his time, methodically working. And this is the thing, when you commit your hands to a lower limb submission... Oh, hammer now fist after nasty. hammer fist! This is nasty for Sola Axel Sola! Sola looking up at the... Looking up at the ref saying, hey, yes, you're gonna it stop is. it! Yeah, it works! Axel Sola almost disdainful in that finish. Gets it done beautifully. Axel Sola with his first finish by way of KO or TKO. Showing great respect to his fallen adversary. An adversary no more inside the Brave Arena. Axel Sola still undefeated by and oh. Great Nation, once again you saw the beautiful sportsmanship that characterizes Brave Combat Federation. Axel Sola was on top. Landing hammer fist after hammer fist after hammer fist. If you blinked, you missed it. But he looked up at the referee, looked him straight in the eye as if to say, and in fact it is saying with body language, hey, I do not want to hit this man anymore. 
his own power to center stage. And big man, make it official. All right, Brave Nation and NFC fans, another explosive end. This comes at 34 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from KHK Team Bahrain and Boxing Squad. That's a introduce our two main event warriors, Brave Nation and NFC fans. Can you feel the thunder? It's time to be brave. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. To all those watching in beautiful Dusseldorf, Germany, and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation, and NFC fans, are you ready? <laughs> Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a big martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and two losses. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 74.7 kilograms. Representing CSA Moldova and fighting out of Chisina, Moldova. Please welcome the number two ranked super lightweight in the world, Mihail Kotuta. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 36 wins, 10 losses, and one no contest. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 74.94 kilograms. Representing Gladiator Fight Jim and fighting out of Germany. Put your hands together for the number one ranked super lightweight in the world. Joy Uton Pellegrino For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. Gentlemen, we've been over the rules. This is my instructions all the time. If I tell you stop, you stop and break clean. If you want to cut, touch gloves, do it now. Go back for better corners. Stoic is Mihail Kultruta, amped up, ready to go. Is Joyoton Luther back? Joyoton stalking down Mihail Kultruta. Kultruta knows the power that's going to be incoming. He's got his hands very close to his head. Look at the difference in hand position right there. But the, the thing is, Kerry, if you strike with Shoyu Don, you're going to get hit hard. If you take him to the ground, he's so good on the ground with devastating submissions. So, oh, but gets caught with a shot over the top. Kutruta has nine wins via KO or TKO. He is dangerous with the hands. Shoyu Don almost inviting punches in as if he believes he can counter them effectively. But even split in the finishes for Zhou Yutong. 13 by KO or TKO, one by way of submission. And he exhibits an eerie calm in there. Almost reckless in his approach. Both men showing terrific speed. Maybe an accidental eye poke. Might, I, I might, think it was might, the have, been, might have been an accidental punch, in, a non-accidental punch in the eye. I think that was the knuckle of the glove. Perhaps. I can't be sure, but just my first instinct was it was a knuckle of the glove. I would need to see the replay. Brave Nation, stand by. We're hopefully going to get a clear view of what that was. And they're back at it. Joyutan back on the jab. Oh, nice shot from Kotruta with the lead hand. A little bit of a misstep, more so than a wobble, I think. Oh, Joe Yuton just finds these pockets of space to land big shots. 
Phil, what does Peregrino mean? It means dangerous, and that's exactly what he is. You're seeing it right here. You're hearing it right here, Brave Nation. Everything he throws is with nasty, nasty intent. Uppercut there. Oh, stiff job. The striking of Joe Uton is just incredible. Woo! Nice flurry for Mihail. He's just finding a home for that job. He's doing the quintessential thing of hitting without being hit. Kochucha countering now with bigger shots than he was before. I think Joe Uton smells a little bit of blood in the water. He's or a lot of bit of blood. Punishing Kochuta with heavy, heavy shots. Takes Kutruta off his feet. And it is pick your poison. You, you get knocked down. You think you get a reprieve on the ground. Time to catch your breath. But no, you have a jiu-jitsu black belt on top of you. We're not even halfway through the round. Beautiful work from Joy Uton. And make no mistake about it. Mihal Kutruta is incredibly dangerous. Danger, Brave Nation. Danger. Shot after shot, winging the shots in. Shots are landing again and again and again and again. It's over. First round. big man all right what a main event it comes to another explosive end at two minutes and 53 seconds of the first round your winner by tko due to strikes joy upton peregrino He's brought to you by Pitbull West Coast. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 191 centimeters tall and weighs already 91.8 kilograms. Represent CDSMA team and fighting out of Novi Sad Serbia. Give it up. For Zarko, Seabat, Set up! Partisan crowd letting the, everybody know what they and think. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and one loss. He stands, what, 93 centimeters tall and weighs already 93.4 kilograms. Representing TNT Gym and fighting out of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Give it up 
for Jakob Nedok. Your referee is Emiliano Carosi. This fight is sponsored by Pitbull West Coast. One more time, thanks to our sponsor, Pitbull West Coast. Here we have it, Kirik, the striker, Zarko Sedoklevich versus the submission specialist of Jakob Nedo. It's on, whose will be done? Big kick from Sedoklevich. You can hear the chants of Jakob ringing out through the arena, Kirik. But it's the striker in on the takedown. Forces a big sprawl from Jakob. Can he get him down so far? Good defensive work. Jakob may try and hit the switch, has the underhook. And this may be exactly where Jakob Nero wants the fight. Works expertly off those double underhook trip takedowns. Usually landing in side control, but Zedo Klevich doing well to fight that hands. Referee may be separating him momentarily. I think Jakob Neda has done the And there hooks. it was. That was very quick. Slovenia loves action. <laughs> nice job from Zedo Klevich. Changing the levels is Jakob Neda. Oh, no, he it! it. He shot! That's it, it's all over! Unbelievable! From Yako Nero, the submission specialist, charges This one comes to an end at 1 minute and 18 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes 
from Ljubljana, Slovenia, Jakob Nekov!